that he chose 12 apostles. 12 apostles. Remember, he had about 72 disciples at one time. But Jesus did not just go and say, no, I, I call this one first, and he responded, and I call this one second, and he responded, and then I call this one third, and he went down and wrote. No. Jesus get himself out of it. And he prayed, I think he prayed all night, seeking God, before he chose the twelve. And look at this. Prophecy must come to pass. And although he prayed and, and asked God, and he got the twelve, Judas was one of them, Apostle Judas. And so Judas, I would say he backslide, you know. He, 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 he sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. He betrayed him. And then he, before he repented, he went and hung himself. Nobody tell him to do that stuff. He could have repented, but he chose to hang himself. Anyway, so there was a prophecy that was prophesied also pertaining to Judas's position, his bishopric, that another should take it. Okay, and then Peter, the spokesman we call him. You know, the Bible let us know that God, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Ghost, gave commandments unto his apostles. All right? Now, so what happened was, God, after um, Judas Depart from the, the, ele, the eleven. The time came that Jesus died because that was his role to betray him, for them to take him and to kill him, etc. So Jesus died. That void was there. Prophecy was still lingering. Prophecy was still, you know, lingering. It had not been fulfilled. And then the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Ghost, commanded the apostle, and then Peter stood up and said, you know, I'm paraphrasing, you know that we should get somebody to replace Judas? And I think he caught the scripture. See, I didn't come, I didn't prepare to tell you all of this stuff, so I may not have all my notes in line like that. I don't remember all the scripture, but I can give it to you probably at the end, right? But you, you make notes, and you email me for anything you, you want um, verification for, I'll give it to you. So, so, um, so, so Peter asked, and you know what they did? Peter and the rest of the apostles, they didn't say, no, this guy was with me, so let me pick this one. I think I like this one. No, they did just like what Jesus did. They sought among them to pick themselves, and they looked, and they came down to the last two. And they said, all right, we have these two. But they prayed. To the Lord, that the Lord, not them, that the Lord will choose which of the two to fill the place of Judas. Yes, I think I think I need my Bible up here to to um fill the place of Judas, and then guess what? They took the they cast lot, and the lot was given by one. And the lot fell on Matthias. There's, there's something I want to bring up why, why I mentioned that. So, look. Jesus chose the first twelve. Jesus. Not the apostles. They didn't have anything to do with it because they were not chosen. They were to be chosen. Jesus did that. The first twelve. Well, Jesus died now. Jesus buried. Jesus was risen. Jesus was ascended. And before he left, he told them that they should tarry at Jerusalem until they endure with power, okay? Until the promise of the Father is fulfilled upon them, which was referring to the Holy Ghost. He told them before he, he leave, he sent them out two by two. He gave them power to do the same thing, which brings bring me back to where I was. He gave them the power to do the same thing he was doing. So, when I asked the question then, oh, so was this fivefold ministry finished? Not necessarily. 
he transferred that power to his disciples. He sent them out two by two, but he gave them power. Because you, we cannot do God's work without power. Okay? Because if you don't, if you go back to the scripture, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord was upon, as, upon him and anointed him to do the work. So God anointed Jesus to do the work. So Jesus gave his disciples power because he was physically with them. But he knew that a couple days from now he's going to be ascended. So he wants to make sure that they don't do anything without they first receive the power. So they, he, he told them, stay at Jerusalem until you get the power. He said, after the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall receive power. Then he said, then you shall be witnesses of me in Judah, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. That's why Peter was able to preach then after he got the Holy Ghost and the rest of them. And to fulfill what Jesus said, all the nations were gathered in. Jewish nations were gathered in. And they heard them speak, the Galileans speak in all of their tongues and languages. And they marvel and glorify God and praise God. So back to where I just left off now. So, so now, um, so Jesus chose the first twelve. He died. One arm dropped up before he died. After his death, who did the, uh, um, the, the other selection? The apostles. Through the influence of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Jesus was not there when Matthias was appointed. But Jesus had something to do with it. The, the, the apostle prayed to him and he gave, the, the, gave them the approval. So the cast lot, the lot came, fell upon um, Matthias and he was numbered with the 11. And so that prophecy that was lingering, but the empty space of the bishopric of uh, Judas was now fulfilled. And so that prophecy was now closed and lay aside. It went in the canon of fulfillment fulfillment prophecies all right now so after Matthias get came on board Jesus now is operating in the Holy Ghost in the church still giving commandments okay now the Bible lets me know that this man called Paul who was once known as Saul when he got saved okay one man by the name of Barnabas met him and saw him and realized that this man is truly saved based on the work that he did, the work that he did, the power that exhibited through him, from him, through the Christ, okay? So, the Bible let me know also that Paul was an apostle by the will of God, not of man. I'm going to find them scripture. You, have to Google, you, can, you, you have to, can Google all them, those scriptures. Not of man, but by the will of God. So, bear me now, because I'm trying to shed some light here. So, the only apostles that was literally, physically chosen, chosen biblically, biblically in the, was in the time of Jesus Christ, was 12. That don't mean that there are only 12 apostles in the scripture. Okay? We talk, we heard about the 12 apostles that will be representing at the 12 gates in Revelation. That city, four square city with 12 gates, and the name of the, name of the 12 apostles shall be there. Alright. I'm just trying to give the information out that those were distinct Apostles, like the distinct names that Jesus would be called, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. He was called, he was called many other names, but those were prophetic and distinct. The same for the twelve apostles; they were distinct, but there were other apostles as well. Paul called to be an apostle, and Barnabas was an apostle. Now, there's, there are three other persons in the Bible that we are still trying to figure out if they were apostles. I think one was Andre, Andrenius, and um, let me see, and Sustenus, and Junior. I'm going to help you out here. I think I can find a few 
the information here quickly. Uh, see how nice I am to you all. Uh, let me see if I can find them. Um, Alright. So, trying to see if I can find one with. Bear with me, I want to give you some information here. Alright, so if you go into Acts 14 and verse 14, that's where Paul and Barnabas was um, identified as apostles, right? Acts 14, 14, that's where Paul and Barnabas was, um, says, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of they went blah, 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 right? Then in 1 Corinthians, um, 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 1 Corinthians 1, you know, we have questions and concerns whether or not Sustainus was an apostle or just a brother. But I'm just giving you these script, the scripture references for edification purposes and so forth, right? It was not stated, you know, outright to say, well, he was. But verse, um, verse 1, it says, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sustainus, our brother, right? So... It could imply, it, it implies, it, and it, it kind of looked like Sustainus was also an apostle, but it's still lingering, just like, oh, we're wondering if Paul is the author of the book of Hebrew, so it's still lingering. But go to Romans 16 now. If we go to Romans 16, and we look at, um, look at verse 11, it says, Salute, um, is it, is it I might have to have the right scripture. Romans 16, 11. Let me see. 11, 11. No. It's, 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 um, that's not the right scripture. Let me see. Uh, one if it's 15. Let me go 15 and see if it's in 15. That, okay, I've got to come back and find this scripture. Let me go back to 1 Corinthians quickly. I'm going to tell you the scripture in case you, you, but let me see if I find it somewhere here first. You know, when you be writing a lot of stuff, sometimes you write the wrong things. Let me see. 15, 11, 1 Corinthians. All right. The, the, the scripture I'm looking for is the one that talks about Andronicus and Junior. So if you, if you Google it, Oh, it's verse 7. So it, it, it says Romans 16, but it's verse 7. Let me go back there. Verse 7. So it says, Wherefore, am I right? Romans 16. Oh, 16. I'm sorry, I was at the wrong chapter. Verse 7, it says, Salute Andronicus, Andronicus and Junior, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. So Paul sent greetings to those two and um, theologians and scholars are still contemplating whether or not Andronicus and Junior were apostles. Now, even if that's not validated, that's still all right. The point I'm making is that there were other apostles beside the 12 apostles and the Bible said, Paul called to be an apostle by the will of God, not of man, okay? Just for the record, because some people believe that there's only, only 12 apostles and the book closed. <clears throat> Let me move quickly on this subject. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So Jesus gave them power after they received the Holy Ghost, so they start preaching the gospel to the whole world. I tell you, God is awesome. God fulfilled that prophecy, one shot. That's why I told folks, I don't, I don't stress myself, I don't worry myself. If, if, if I know I have the Holy Ghost, and I know I have God in me, so when I don't see things the way I think it's supposed to be, I just chill. As long as I am in the will of God, as long as I'm doing the things to please God, let the Lord have his way. Because God... We can put out a lot of energy trying to achieve some things, and God can give it to us in one shot. One day we wake up and somebody say, Boom, there it is. Just one day. Can you imagine 
people who buy lotto, I mean, play lotto. I heard a story one day, this lady driving to work. She got her bills like we all do. She got all kind of stuff going on with her. But she purchased the lotto. On her way to work, her daughter called her and said, Mommy, guess what? It was a daughter, I think, or some story like that. But she make a U-turn. When she found out that that was her number, she did not show up to work. She became a millionaire. Other people, the point I'm making is this. I didn't tell you to go and gamble. I'm making a point. Oh, one day can change a person's life. Just one day. You go to bed poor and hungry. Oh my God, look at the four leper outside the city. They were scared to death. They said, if we stay out here, we're going to die. And if we go in here, they must see we are my killers. But some, one wise one among them said, look, but we are going to die regardless, so let's go, man. <laughs> Lord of mercy. They weren't in the city. It was all theirs. So, God didn't have to let them take boats and sheep and canoe, nor swim, nor paddle. <laughs> Jesus. Now walk over mountains and two regions to get to the different nations. He brought them together one shot. They were all at Jerusalem, man. And the, the apostles of Jesus Christ, they preached the gospel to the whole nation. That was fulfilled. All right, let me move on, Holy Ghost. I just want to, I want to was to clear up this part because a lot of folks have issue with apostles and no one is only 12 apostles and you know there was no more apostles and they, they would almost want to say every other apostle is going to go to hell so I don't know I don't know if um, Paul is going to go to hell or not you know I don't know if um, Matthias is going to go to hell because Judas gone there so I don't know if he want to go with him but you know what I'm saying but anyway so let's try to help the body of Christ that's why I have the, the, the conference now so those apostles, they were given the power to do the same work, the same five-fold ministry work. I want you to pay attention, everybody. The same five-fold ministry work. It was given prophetically to Jesus Christ. What Jesus do, what we call transfer of power. Because he's still working. Now he's working through us. Okay? He is working through us. Because he only have part-time job here. So he, he had a early part-time ministry that he had to give up at some point. But the prophetic ministry has to continue. But as the mega fivefold, he that is domain. So he now transfer power and he gave them power. Send them out. So at the upper room. He gave them power after they received the Holy Ghost. Now they began to, began to preach. All right. <clears throat> that was God part of the prophetic ministry of Jesus Christ. So here, now Jesus is off the scene physically. Now his apostles took up the bat button and they started around. Now, so Paul, he was an apostle by Jesus Christ. The will of God. He was an apostle. So if we want to do some maths quickly, we can say 11 plus 1. No, we can say 12. Forget my fingers. I'm sorry. 12 <laughs> minus 1 equals 11. And 11 plus 1 equals 12. And 12 plus 1 equals 13. I'm just going to stop at Paul for now. Uh, possible Barnabas. And if you want to say 13 plus 1 equals 14. Since we're not sure about and the other two, Junius, Sustainus, and um, what is his name? Andronicus. Since we're not so sure, we're we going to kind of like put them on hold for now. But we want to deal with what we know. So we could say, okay, we have those apostles. Right? Now, Jesus now, the Bible says, he ascended he gave gift unto man. This is what is common. When I go Google looking for 
make a fivefold. All I could see is the fivefold ministry, fivefold ministry, fivefold ministry that we are accustomed to. So this is where we now get the fivefold ministry from. So he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He didn't give them gift to look good. <laughs> Lord of mercy, help me. Lord of mercy. To feel, you know, great. To look pious. And to have this image as though, you, do you know who I am? No. He didn't care much what, how we look. If Jesus cared how we look, a lot of us wouldn't be saved. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah. But he gave us gift according to our faith, man, and the grace of God. Right? So he gave the church those gifts. I want to say to you today, just as how the five prophetic names of Jesus was distinct, they were special, so it was for those five gifts that God gave to the body of Christ. They were distinct because there were other gifts. You got gifts of tongues, gifts of prophecy, gifts of healing, gifts of miracles, gifts of help, gifts of government, gifts of this, gifts of that. Those gifts are not the same. They don't, they don't carry the same weight of the fivefold ministry gift. Okay? Now, why they did not carry the same weight? Uh, in, in, in Ephesians 4 11, it tells us, right? In Ephesians 4 11, it tells us, let's get there. Ephesians 4, uh, 4 11. You know, they said, um, uh, uh, okay, e e Ephesians. Ephesians 4 11. It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some teachers and some evangelists and pastors and teachers. I hope I didn't read it right. Hear why he gave the gift. For the perfecting of the saints, for the works of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's it. That was the reason why he gave the gift. So you see, that's why those five gifts are distinct from the others. So why you have an apostle or a prophet and an evangelist and a pastor and a teacher that still can preach and heal and prophesy and interpret and help in the church and serve in the church and, 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 and do other things, the gift to baptize, the gift to negotiate, the gift to become deacon, to sort out and so forth. The rest did not have this responsibility. Only those who receive those distinct gifts, those five special gifts, it comes with a divine duty of perfecting the saints of the work of God and of edifying the body of Christ. Those are great responsibility. Do you know responsibilities and y'all look, forgive when you come to grandma, grandma messed up, trust me, you could put my name beside it. But I'm still glad I make it through high school and baby school and College. I even went to college too. It still come out not the best grammatical person. Ain't God wonderful? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's very important, those gifts. So now, they have to perfect the saints. Beloved, if you have a potter and he has the clay on the wheel that he turns to make the, the vessel, that object, and if he kept spinning it and turning it and it, it, it doesn't come to what he wants it if it takes him two hours he wants to make something that nobody else have on the market he's going to spend the time to, to, to make it work so he brings it to perfection we as, as um, the gifted uh, powerful ministry, ministry workers we have to perfect the sense every one of us have the same responsibility None of us are super than any. Okay? None of us. At the end of the day, whatever we do, it's supposed to lead to the perfecting of the saints, 
the work of the ministry and the edifying of the body of Christ. So I don't want somebody to run up and say, oh, I'm an apostle, so you know what? I am champion. I mean, you can say, oh, I'm a prophet. Oh, I'm champion. And oh, I'm an uh, what? evangelist. Oh, I'm champion. You know how many places I've traveled to? So what? When you come back, make sure you are perfecting the saints, you are doing the work of the ministry, and you are edifying the body of Christ. Because guess what happened? When Jesus was here, <laughs> God, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost is so good. The Holy Ghost knows how to guide us. When Jesus, Jesus was here, he gave them power, and he sent them out to hear the sick, raise the dead, let the blind see, etc., etc. They did it. What the Bible said they did? I'm paraphrasing. Oh, man, they run back home. Jesus, Jesus, guess what? We raise the dead in the name of Jesus. We cast out demons. We, we, we do all kinds of stuff. Jesus said, good. That's good thing, man. <laughs> you have the right to rejoice. But Jesus said, but calm down, calm down. He said, in, I'm paraphrasing, in spite of all that you did, you have to make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Hello? So, all the things that we are able to do, and all the titles that God gave to us, and the gift, don't play a fool of ourselves, and think that we're going to big up our chest, big up ourselves, do all that we can do, and go to hell at the end of the day. We who have the fivefold ministry gift, we are exceptional in terms of what we have to do. We have to perfect the saints of God. So any apostle, any prophet, any evangelist, any pastor, any teacher are doing work for the for outside of that being their main gold, you are laboring in vain, man. I am the, the, the pastor that will tell you just what the Holy Ghost put in my heart. Now I will not apologize unless the Holy Ghost tell me to. And the Holy Ghost not gonna tell me something, then tell me to apologize. Because he sees the future. Okay? So we have to be careful that we are doing the work of God for the right purpose. We must edify the body of Christ. We must perfect them. It takes time. Sometimes people wonder why the pastor don't get rid of the saints. No, he can't. He has to perfect the saints. Because that same saints might turn around to be his, 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 his savior. He even hurt. Sometimes, you know, a person don't start out so good, but they end up good. The Bible says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Yes, like in a race, some people take off running fast. Boy, you see that's going to be the winner. It's two more laps to go. You, he's just drifting away. And the hombre at the back that was, looked like he was struggling, he just keep storming in. So the first become the what? <laughs> the last. And the last became the first. All right, that's a lot I try to cover with the mega firefold ministry, bless God, mega firefold ministry, praise God, and um, the fivefold ministry, and the work of the apostle, and those things. You know why I spend so much time on those things? For clarification purposes, okay? So, let me see if there's anything more I want to interject with that. Mm, I think I gave you enough on that. You can email me for more, okay? All right, thank you. Somebody waiting in the room. Let them in for me, please. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the 